very excited. You let that just rage through you. It's I know, amazing. letting it soak in a little bit. Uh, it's cool. We must be extroverts, you know? We just feed that energy out. I know, I like it. All right, <laughs> so I am proud to introduce to you our next guest who was diagnosed with OCD in 2005. And she is the owner and creator now of myocddiary.com. And you had a great experience just being a TEDx UNLV speaker. So please put your hands together for Julia Brintz. Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, I guess you've lived with it and you've been able to pull some strengths out of it, but the main thing is, I guess I just don't understand OCD, and like, I'd like you to help try to get uh, an understanding, is, is it a spectrum where, like, I don't know, because I can't work without my desktop icons being right. organized, is it a spectrum that goes like down that until it becomes something that hurts your life, or is it a completely different kind of problem? Well, that's a really good question. I mean, people think of anxiety and depression in terms of, I guess, common language. So when people get kind of anxious or sad when you know something bad happens, like they didn't get to the yogurt store before it closed, they're like, I'm so depressed. And honestly, that's not truly what it means to be depressed. That just means that you're kind of bummed. Right. So OCD does kind of work like that. So it falls on the spectrum of mild to moderate to severe to extreme. So on the extreme side, uh, have you heard of Howard Hughes? He's the aviator dude, right. Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah, played him in the movie. So the deal was that he actually had it so extreme that he was completely not functional. He was stuck in his house, like completely just struggling with this disorder. And he would close up himself in his room. He would save his urine in jars. He didn't cut his toenails. And unfortunately, his staff actually took total advantage of this. And they would purposely make him uncomfortable by touching his food. So they would keep him, uh, he would make them do it again. And they would have more hours to work at more. Okay. Oh, no. So yeah, <laughs> isn't that terrible? Um, and uh, more on the mild side, that's where people get tripped up. They're like, oh, well, I'm kind of anal retentive and I like things clean, so does that mean I have OCD? Well, not exactly, because that means you have a personality and everybody's got one. So the difference is between a personality or a quirk and a disorder <laughs> is that it, one impairs your life. It, it just totally, it's about your ability to function in, in daily life. So if you just like things organized and you have this method to doing it and it's just kind of quirky, then it's not a disorder because there's no chaos going for you. You're just particular, you know? But if you actually are struggling with it and there's anxiety pushing you to make this perfect and follow the lines up on the table, that's a little different. Like if you're not comfortable with your beer like that and it's gonna drive you crazy and you're just like really upset and you can't get it together, like that's a little different. So, so is it your mind is just stuck on it? Is like, and, yeah. and, like, until it, and then once it becomes like to the perfect angle, then you can continue you on with your thoughts? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just like a bunch of little roadblocks to getting to like normal exactly. Mm -hmm. thoughts. Okay. So could you walk me through like in your mind how it works? Like a, if you have a specific example, especially like where you got caught and you were like, this yeah. is OCD and this is hurting my life. Yeah, sure. So uh, getting dressed was a really hard thing for me to do. Oh, okay. So I needed... So design options? Or... I know, right? I was like, oh my gosh, so many clothes to No, actually what happened... <laughs> No, um, my problem was that I believed if I had a negative thought, like if something popped into my mind, like everybody has thoughts that just intrude into the brain. So, uh, you know, maybe you're just standing there and you think, oh God, like I hope nothing bad happens to my little sister. You know, you just bypass that thought and it goes away. But with OCD, your mind loops around that thought and you can't let it go. So if I was picking out a shirt one day in the morning and I pick out the shirt and at the same time I think, oh no. Like something might happen to my little sister. And then I can't wear this shirt anymore because for some reason my mind's telling me that if I wear this shirt while I'm thinking this thought, then oh, I will make it happen. Oh, yeah, gotcha. so the thoughts feel really real because there's so much anxiety behind that thought there's no way it can't be real. That's what it feels like. So I would not be able to wear this shirt. And then sometimes I would be like, okay, cool, I got the shirt on, I'm good. But then I'd have another bad thought and I'd have to take the shirt off and try again. So then um, I was married at the time, so my husband would come in the room and he'd be like, are you okay? I'm like, no, I, I can't get dressed. <laughs> I'm stuck, I'm in this pile of clothes. And so he would have to come in and pick out my outfit for me every day because if I did it myself, I, I would just get stuck in my closet. I mean, could you see so. that in yourself and just like close your eyes and you need to mind mo or? Oh, it just, it not... it, you know, that's the thing that's totally weird about OCD is that it really can't be outsmarted. You know, it's something that logic does not work around. You know, you can tell yourself 
all day. Right. Like, there's no way that no one will die. You know, you can say all that, but your mind is, yeah. yeah, it's just so strong that you know it's ridiculous. Like, the whole time you feel completely crazy and you know that there's no rationale behind it. Yeah. But it's so strong that you're like, I just, I can't help it. And that's why it feels almost like you're two people because you have like your normal brain and then you have your OCD brain, and usually the OCD brain is. Gotcha. So you can actually feel like, oh, I'm in an OCD moment now, yeah. and I'm kind of back. It's been a bit a while since I had one of those moments, and then it kicks in? Yeah, it just kicks in. And then after you've, a lot of times there's re repetition. So like, I might need to do this a certain amount of times, and then I can't stop till I've done it like 80 times. You know, So I'm doing this. I'm counting. I could even talk to you while counting, because that's how it goes. Yeah. So I could do that. I'm OK. I don't have to do it. But yeah, there was a yeah. time where I did, okay. and I could do that, Good. and then Oh, no, right. Yeah. <laughs> so I would do that, and then after a while, I'm like, okay, that, that felt right. I hit 80, and it, my anxiety is low enough, so I, I guess I did it right. But if I hit 80, and it still didn't feel right, I'd be like, I have to go again, and I have to do it again. And I might be here for hours doing that, even though there's no reason besides the fact that I just don't feel okay. Right. So. Now, what, a minute ago when you were saying like sometimes it feels like one thing triggers another, like you're like if mm -hmm. I don't get the right outfit, then my little sister will get hurt. Is it is mm -hmm. everything triggered to something else, or is sometimes you just have to hit eighty, hit eighty, or does it always like I gotta hit eighty or else something will uh, happen? That's a good question. That... Um, a lot of times it is triggered. The anxiety is triggered by a thought. But sometimes you've just done whatever it was so many times that you already know it's going to happen. Like I might wake up in yeah. the morning and it's just now it's part of my ritual that I have to flip the light switch on 20 times. Even though I didn't have a thought, I've just had to do that the last few years, so I just have to do it now, even though there's no thought there. So you create these patterns. But I might get anxious if I don't do that. Right. And I'll anticipate that, so I have to go do it anyways. So. Is it uh, so? When you looked into OCD, is there a segment of the population that has it? If so, what segment is like? What's the number on that? And is there special verticals where people with OCD are excelling at, or oh, yeah. anything like that? Um, they think it's about two percent of the people yeah. have it, and it's not just a you know American disease. People kind of think that, but it's kind of all over. Um, but they've also found some studies have shown that people with OCD tend to be of higher intelligence. Yeah, I'm really smart. Oh yeah, you're good. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> A lot of work, yeah. <laughs> um, also, they tend to be more empathic because they're so sensitive to what they're feeling and they don't ever want to hurt anybody. They're always trying to protect everything because they're afraid. Uh, okay. So they tend to be very aware and very like, concerned. Like, like more so, more yeah. than most people? Yeah, it's almost like the emotions are, are um, if you can imagine like coming out of a concert and you're like, I can't really hear anything because it was so loud in there. Right. So it's kind of like Jay Z is out of control. Exactly, Jay Z is out of control. So it's like when the volume's so high, after a while it feels normal. But when you first walk in, it's really loud. Right. So same with emotions. With OCD, your emotions are so high. Uh, it becomes your baseline. Sort yeah. Of. So then when that goes up or down, it's just it's completely not in parallel with anyone else that you know doesn't have that kind of yeah. experience. Gosh, two percent of the population, and is it genetic or? Yeah, there's a genetic component to it. Um, I did a study with, or I was one of those. Um, I, did, I participated in some research for Johns Hopkins, where they were trying to find if there was a genetic component, and they did find one. So um, one of the the cert genes, I forget which one, but there is something in there that relates to it, and it's got a lot of connection with other. It's comor comorbid is um, with. Let's see what else. Substance abuse, depression, other anxiety disorders, um, eating disorders, um, all kinds of stuff. They kind of overlap a lot of times. Does anybody in the audience know anybody with OCD? Like, is, like real OCD? One person knows that? Okay. You said, yeah, probably fits about right. So, um, what is uh, some ways that dealing with OCD made you stronger? Like, what are the lessons, like, dealing with some of those struggles that everybody could learn from? Well, you know, for years, doctors told me that there wasn't a cure that I, my OCD was so severe that I was not one of the ones that would be helped very much by therapy. And I wasn't really happy with that because to me that was someone saying that I couldn't do something and I don't like hearing that. So um, I, I decided just to go forward and push and that's why I started my blog and I was like I'm going to figure this out, I'm going to do something. And so I think from that I learned that, I mean to me if I could get over something like that then it just kind of showed me that I'm stronger than I thought I was. Yeah. And I'm definitely super clean, which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, realistically, I think that going through what I went through, I can't look back and think it was for nothing. 
I have to believe that there was something I could get out of it, you know? So that's why I did start my blog, because I want to help other people that are going through this. Yeah. And So you feel totally yeah. over it? You're cured? Um, you know, OCD is not something that you actually truly get cured of typically. It's more like a so virus. You your life is yeah. together. Yeah, like Good it's job. dormant. Thank Good you. Good job. Like that. <laughs> Back to regular life. Okay, so yeah. um, so you've got, a, you've got a blog and a YouTube channel, and you have great mm -hmm. videos on there. Um, it's myocddiary.com. And on Twitter, you're my OCD Diary USA. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, I hopped on there, and one of the first videos I saw was uh, about a method you were using that was called journaling. Mm -hmm. um, I just for the last con the last question, if you could just explain journaling, because it seems like it might have it might help anybody who's ruminating on a problem. Yeah. So. Oh, absolutely. And you know, journaling people think it's just creative writing or free thought. But there's actually a structure to it, and if you know the structure, it's a lot easier to get into it because I was never one for, for writing down just like how I was doing in that day. It, to me, it's a little, I couldn't get there. But with journaling, you kind of, uh, I can actually tell you a little exercise that kind of helps yeah, to yeah, start. So basically what you do is you start out writing um, 10 emotions you have. You can't say angry, mad, or sad, or happy. You know, those are too simple. They're a bit rudimentary. Right. So you want to stick with things like frustrated, disappointed, um, elated, euphoric, whatever. So you pick 10. You rate them on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the most severe and how you're feeling that emotion. And then you describe what it feels like without judgment. Okay. So for example, I might say, oh, I'm nervous. I might rate that a 4. I feel it mostly in my stomach. It feels kind of like butterflies. It sort of kicked in in the afternoon. Also, I, it's making me just sort of unhappy and it's triggering these other thoughts. And it's related to this. So you do that. Um, you do that for about a week, and that will increase your emotional complexity in terms of your language and how you are able to articulate your emotions. Because oftentimes we end up separating the like these are good emotions, these are bad emotions, mm -hmm. and then you've got these emotions that are kind of in the middle that aren't like really great or that bad, and then you end up just sort of like lumping them with one or the other because you don't have that sort of articulation. So oh, when you right, increase right. your vocabulary, yeah, you, better, yeah, okay. yeah, you create a webbing which is a lot um, easier to you know to structure. So once you have that down then you can start journaling and that's where you can actually go in and I, I say do it every day for 30 days it's easier to keep, create a habit after 30 days yeah. um, so you go in and then that's when you sort of write down like hey this is going on and the idea is that you don't let anybody see it because you will censor yourself if you know that someone's gonna read it right so, so you just gotta be honest okay you gotta be honest all right um, well I hopefully everybody say that and you have I'm sure you have people with OCD following you right I mean oh, you yeah. built a good community of people that you're helping do you feel like you're Help of the world, kind of? I hope so. I That's think, definitely the sure, goal. Sure <laughs> okay, so yeah, myocddiary.com. I think maybe we should give her one of our famous cheers. Oh, cheers! cheers! Yeah,